It does make you realise though when you we take people's glasses off and hearing aids that what we actually do to them. I know it's do you know what I mean? It's like everything went but it was already a bit blurred and then it went completely blurred and they just hear all these voices. So yeah it is good, it does make you think. out of that wheel because it's all consuming so you're looking around and you can you're literally in the room is with the environment around you it's very well put together really good and, and what, what did you think about what what you saw what you did, did you feel like you were experiencing it from the point of view of the patient yeah you did i think it was really helpful to see the the changeable presentations and that one minute sort of everything was clear then the next minute it was all very fuzzy and there was sirens going off and um there was smoke coming out of the vents and um, again seeing how the patient would have interpreted what the staff were doing as well. Surreal. Yeah, it's um, yeah, very strange really. It's, um, it really is. But I mean, quite beneficial, I think, um, yeah, to actually give that insight into uh, what the patients are actually um, experiencing, I suppose, is um, yeah, very interesting for us because obviously we see it on a regular basis here but we don't really know what it's like for that patient to, uh, to actually, you know, to suffer from delirium. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, really uh, very powerful, I would yeah. say. It's uh, all the colors and all the things and what's with the uh, hallucinations and uh, the VR really does capture that quite well, so. Oh God, oh God, it's me they're talking about. It's going to be me next. It's completely immersive to be able to sit there and have a patient's view of what it feels like when we go up to patients, we remove their senses, so we take away their hearing, we take away their sight. Um, obviously on ITU we give them all the drugs that can increase delirium to be able to get the patient's perspective, to feel so small and not be able to do anything about those things and get my senses back to how they should be. It feels really um, disempowering, so you, you can't do anything to help yourself at all. I think that'd be, that's a really good tool to teach delirium because it I'll certainly go back into my practice and think about what I'm doing to patients, maybe take the extra few seconds to explain what I'm going to do and why I'm going to do it as well, which I think is important. It's not just about the what's going on, it's why you're doing those things to help try and rationalise in that patient's mind that isn't thinking rationally what is going on and where they are and what they're doing. Oh my God, she looks terrified. When she hadn't got her glasses on, you could see things. I thought there was food on the table, but it wasn't food. It was actually just a blanket. So you can now understand why people are reaching for things. And, you know, you know how they try and eat and drink out of things that you just think. I thought there were bananas on the table. It wasn't. It was a blanket. Um, yes, it was actually quite scary. And then at one point, they, they wheeled a, a patient in, but it looked like a dead body because it was covered which would be absolutely petrifying. And nobody explained why they were wheeling people in and out. Um, so yeah, yeah, really quite scary. I think when I saw two people with the, with the virtual reality on, what struck me is that normally someone experiences delirium, you don't see, it's, it's invisible. But by having the virtual reality on, it's like that barrier between you and them and you realise how just isolated that person is because they, they've got this almost this barrier of the delirium surrounding them and it was it was just seeing that how vulnerable they are and how isolated that, that must this just makes them and even if you, people approach them they're still disconnected, the, the delirium's causing that layer of disconnect really, that's what I observe. I've noticed plenty of people with delirium, um, so I think I'm aware of, of the process and the effect, but I've never just seen that moment of vulnerability, that moment of disconnect quite so clearly as just seeing it there really. So listen, I'm, 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 I'm here with Dr Becky Chubb from, from Combined Healthcare, who's the um, consultant psychiatrist um, with uh, for older people, yep. Uh, and the, uh, the VR training film that we've done was, in actual fact, uh, Becky's idea, completely Becky's idea. And he hearing some of the reflections over the morning of people, of, of, of how they've experienced it and, 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 and what it's brought to them, the impact, it, you must be absolutely delighted. I am. I'm, I'm so pleased that the idea was to really put 
the person in the patient's shoes so that you really get to experience what it might be like to have an episode of delirium. And I think the other thing that I've, I've learned from you guys is that actually it's, it's really helpful as well to just see somebody else using the VR um, tool rather than just only experiencing yourself, which was something, is an added benefit I didn't realise. And what have you learned from, from seeing that? I think just it's another way of using it, isn't it? That you don't have to have the VR headset on because it might not be for everybody. Not everybody feels comfortable putting the VR headset on, but actually there's still loads to be learned even if you're in the room and you're learning with somebody else, which is fabulous. Mm -hmm.